standing on the rock tonight. Let's all stand together. We're going to sing Leaning, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. We'll sing these verses together tonight. Leaning, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. On the everlasting arms, what a blessedness, what a Thank you. you. May be seated, and uh, thank you so much for being here tonight, choir. Thank you for singing that song. Thank you so much. What a blessing standing on the solid rock. It sounds. My green light's on, so that means I've done my part. <laughs> Rick, that's not acceptable. 
All right. Well, they're, they'll give it a try. And are any of these other ones working? You're going to have to reboot, reboot the whole system. We'll try this one for a little while. And so it is good to see you tonight. Even if we have a little technical difficulties, I was <clears throat> talking to the Davenport's back there. They said their daughter, during some of this storm, they, she watched a lightning strike a flagpole right across from their house. And uh, so we've had some different issues going on with the storm. But you bear with us and we'll... This one won't work either, but uh, <laughs> so we'll figure out something. But as you can see, as you know, we've got a lot of uh, audiovisual stuff supposed to be happening tonight. We've got a vacation Bible school recap video. We've got some things for young people. They're going to sing for us as well, but we'd like to have a sound system for all of that stuff. So you bear with us for a little bit. We're going to pray and ask God to bless everything that goes on. While we're praying over the service, you need to pray extra, but the guys upstairs can get all this electronic stuff working. But we do thank the Lord. This morning, we had a, um, a total of those services, I think, 678, and we look back at uh, text from Larry. And um, so there, I heard something coming along. But uh, so we had 678 in both services this morning. We thank God for that. And I also thank God, though, for the discovery class going on. And I want to mention to those of you who went to the discovery class with Bobby and Christy, and there are several others in there as well. We will be having another one of those. We don't have the date scheduled yet, but it'll go for another four weeks, and another group of folks come in, and that will give, give us an opportunity to connect people to Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. And uh, so I'm very thankful for what the Lord is doing. It kind of sounds like when you've had a, you've been swimming and your ears are all full of water. I don't know if it sounds this way to you, but it sounds like it's all odd to me. So I'm sure that you're hearing some of that as well, but that's better than nothing. And uh, so we're looking forward to a great service. What I'm going to do is ask God's blessings. I'm not praying for your behalf anyways. So I'm just going to. First thing on here is announcements. I want to give some of those, and we want to do a recap video of Vacation Bible School, and we'll find out from them up there whether we're not we're ready. I failed to mention before we prayed, though, somebody called just before the service. He's uh, faithfully served the Lord. He was in gospel music. Didn't ch never charged anything, and uh, but he called and asked our church to pray for a good brother, Tony Hickson, who I don't know, but he's got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, got some macular degeneration, and a lot of things going on. So I said I will certainly mention him, but that was before service tonight. I failed to mention that before our prayer time, but I wanted to uh, just remind you that Tuesday. 
On July 2nd, there's the Oasis cookout, Brother Nathan Susong. He was out in the lobby today. But if you want to come to that, it goes from 11 to 4 over toward Bays Mountain, but at the Eastman Picnic Shelter. He's got all the information that we would love to have you. If you're in that Oasis group, maybe you've never been to one of the meetings, but you'd like to come to that one. It's going to be a special time. We'll have a good time. Me and Kyle and Daniel, we're planning to be there throughout the day. We've got a, I've got a funeral later that day for... Um, uh, Miss Carol Wallace's brother's service, but that's not till two. So we'll be in and out for that day as well. We're looking forward to that. That's on Tuesday. And then also coming up July 10th here, not too long, just a week and a half or so, we've got a tour group from West Coast Baptist College and uh, Brother Rasmussen, he's one of the executive vice president, I think is his title. He'll be preaching for us that night, have a good time together. And then we've got junior, uh, junior day camp coming up July 22nd. So we've got a few weeks on that, but I want you to be praying for Kyle as he heads that up. And then on Sunday, July 21st, We've got some training for that fair booth, and I really do want to encourage you. Maybe you're looking for a way to be involved in ministry, and it's, uh, it's not necessarily in the back where nobody sees you. It's kind of the front lines, but maybe you'd like to work the fair booth people coming through and you'd be able to share the gospel with them. Well, we're going to have training to get you equipped for that. That training will be on July the 21st. You can ask Daniel for more information, but then that will get us ready for that fair booth coming up in August. And we'll certainly uh, praise the Lord for the opportunity to do that. One other, it's not announced, but a prayer request. Uh, Brother David Wampler talked to him right before service. His grandson came and up in West Virginia for the baptism of a family member of theirs, but he, young, young fella, how old was he, Brother David? How old is he, Miss Jeannie? 12? Fell and dislocated his hip. And uh, so he's got to be taken to the Children's Hospital up around D.C., up there in that part of West Virginia. So uh, be praying for Cayman is his name. So those are some of the announcements I want to keep you up to date on. We've got a video for ready. Brother Jack, are we going to be good, you think? All right. Well, I want you to see this. We've had a great, there's been a great week going on with Bible school. And uh, so, Kyle, do you need to say anything to set this video up? Just let it play. All right, let's watch this. I know it'll be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord for a wonderful, wonderful week. And uh, even getting dunked in the dunk tank was a wonderful thing, all right? And uh, we had a, a blast. Uh, this VBS uh, looked a lot different than it does today, but uh, we had a good time. And I uh, want to say thank you to everybody who helped and uh, many hands put in on this program. And uh, we're praising the Lord for it. Uh, we had about 180 children here uh, each night. Our highest night, I think, was 192 children. And uh, praising the Lord for that. But uh, beyond that, we had 24 professions of faith this week. Praise the Lord. And uh, then today at the, the kids' carnival, we were able to preach to them before we went out and uh, had another profession of faith today. And so we're praising the Lord for what he did. And uh, just like Pastor said, we're thankful too that the weather held off. And it's amazing. We see God work over and over and over again. And it's wonderful to come to a time like this where we can just stop and thank the Lord and praise him for how good he is. And we're praising the Lord for this week at VBS.
Amen. Well, a VBS. It takes a lot of different things to happen. But one part of our VBS that is uh, certainly one of the uh, biggest parts of the labor that goes in is our bus ministry. And uh, we are so thankful for all of our bus workers and all the work that they do. You know, a lot of the buses they're leaving be- uh, from 4 o'clock to uh, anywhere between 4 to 4.45 and going out. And it, you know it was hot this week. And we're thankful for our bus workers. And uh, it's, a, it's a great privilege and joy to be able to be part of the bus ministry and to be the bus director and to get to work with our bus workers, ride on a bus. And uh, be involved with the kids, and uh, so it is. Uh, it's just such a joy and privilege. But tonight, I wanted to take a special moment in our service. We are uh, we are thankful for all of our bus workers, but one in particular that we wanted to make mention of tonight, John Potter. Uh, John, if you don't mind making your way up here, this is not what he wants to happen. But this is. I told him this is. It's a requirement because of what he's doing to me. And so no, but we are thankful for John Potter. And uh, I'm telling you, there are uh, a lot of parts of the bus ministry that are maybe not always all that easy. You come all the way up here. Come all the way up here, brother. So they're not all that easy, and uh, they are, they take a lot out of you. And John Potter has faithfully been doing the work that the bus ministry takes. He goes out multiple times a week, many times, visiting kids, loving on families. He's contacted me time and time again about people he knew that needed some type of help, whether spiritual or physical or just trying to get it situated on his bus. And he has labored and labored tirelessly, uh, maybe not tirelessly. He's probably been tired a lot of times, but, uh, <laughs> but he's, he's looked tireless about it. And, uh, and so we are so thankful for John. He served in the bus ministry for almost 20 years, 19 and a half. So we're just going to say 20 years. We'll round it up and, to 20. And uh, we round up here. Yeah. And so we, uh, he served in the bus ministry 20 years, but it feels like uh, the Lord's kind of positioning some things for him to uh, take some different steps. And so he is retiring from the bus ministry today. And uh, this was his last day. And what a great day. You had, what, 37 or so on your bus today is what? I was told 37 on his bus today and uh, just working it hard. And what a great, uh, great last day for you, John. We want to thank you. We want to let you know that we love you and we love uh, the work that you've done and the work that you have uh, put into these kids. And there, there are kids, adults uh, all over uh, Kingsport that have been touched by yeah. your life. Amen. And we want to thank you and want to just, just in a small way, we wanted to uh, give you something just to give you uh, a thanks from us, from the church. And uh, we just want you to have that and want you to know our gratitude is just unending with regards to that. So wanted to pass that on to you. I had some balloons, but like many things in the bus ministry, they don't really work out the way you expect them to. They're in the hallway over there on the floor <laughs> because they're no longer floating. And, uh, and so, John, I have balloons for you, but I don't think you want everybody to see you with these balloons that are uh, on the ground behind you. All right. So. Let's scoot over, scoot over here, Brother John. We'll give you a picture. He wasn't downstairs. Well, I. Well, I thank the Lord for the bus ministry. You know, I spent years being the bus director. If I wasn't the pastor of this church, I was just going here. I be, I would be a bus captain if God would let me, because it is the. It is the best way to fulfill the Great Commission because you are going out, you are teaching, you are bringing them in, but then you're, te- you're getting to disciple them as well. The Great Commission is go and teach and uh, see them be baptized and teach them again. And uh, so I love the bus ministry and I want to encourage you. You may not say, you may say, well, I, can't, I don't have enough time to dedicate like John Potter, as Daniel mentioned, he's out every week and you may not have time to do that, but you can come along and do something because we certainly need uh, laborers in this ministry. I'm praying for God to call some missionaries to Gray and Kingsport and Johnson City that we might see our bus ministry flourish and uh, bring in many, many folks. And so thank you, Brother John. I appreciate that. And uh, he usually does end up downstairs doing the live stream room. And uh, so I'm so grateful, though, for all the, the labor. But we need replacements. And uh, so would you please make it a matter of prayer? You say, Pastor, I don't have the body to do it. And maybe you don't, but you can certainly, certainly pray as the Lord told us to pray. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Would you join me in prayer for that? And we certainly want to ask the Lord to bless us with new and wonderful laborers. So Thank you, Brother John. Let's give him one more hand, would you please? (laughs) 
Well, we're going to sing hymn number four, five, 467. 467, my heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. We've got a lot of work to do before Jesus comes to get us. He may come back tonight, and we gave it a shot this week. We gave it a shot today, but uh, that heavenly home is waiting for us. If you're able to stand together, it's been a while since we've been standing. Let's sing together as Daniel comes and lead us. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. No pain, no death can enter there, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on, I feel like traveling on. My together, dear Lord, the giving, the singing, dear Lord, which all done in worship to you. Thank you for the opportunity. Lord, we do pray for Tony Hickson that somebody asks us to pray for as he goes to this doctor's appointment tomorrow. And bless the good soldier of the cross that called it in. I don't remember his name, uh, but sung for you for many years. Lord, bless him. But bless Cayman, dear Lord, this young man that's waiting to go to the hospital now and transferred to a bigger hospital. Uh, Lord, give the doctors wisdom there as they set that hip and uh, Lord, just uh, strengthen him and comfort him and bless his family as well. But, Lord, thank you for the time to give. Thank you for the wherewithal to give. And, Lord, you've been so good to us. Bless it, please, this offering. Use it for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Pastor gave us an opportunity tonight to uh, recap our trip to England with the teenagers. And uh, if you direct your attention to our screens, we have a, a video here and uh, then a few other things after that. Uh, but we'll watch this video at this time.
Well, we really did have a great time while we were over there. And uh, it just gives you a little bit of a insight to what we did. We did so many things. We uh, got up early and stayed up late, and we were busy the whole time in between. Uh, we got to uh, do some outreach uh, with that weekend when we first got there and uh, got to be a part of Beaches Roads uh, Baptist Chapel's uh, services on Sunday, got to be a part of Sunday school. And uh, then we went to a place called uh, Worcester, a town that uh, he, uh, Pastor Mullins, compared to Johnson City. And uh, the town of, of Worcester is a place that there's not one church in it that preaches the gospel. And uh, we got to go and, and hold some gospel meetings and uh, got to preach on the street. Many of the guys got a chance to, to preach on the streets and uh, hand out leaflets and uh, do different things. And uh, got to have that opportunity there. And then uh, from there we uh, had those services each night. And then uh, we also got to do the touristy things and see some things. But we're thankful for the ways that God worked. And uh, tonight uh, we have some testimonies that uh, many of the teenagers are going to come and share uh, just a minute of a, a testimony of something the Lord did or a way that the Lord worked on their heart. And uh, so I'm excited and uh, we're going to start with one of our uh, adults that came with us, Mr. Barker. And uh, so I'm going to invite you to come on up and he'll start us off with their testimonies and we'll go through these different testimonies and uh, hear what the Lord has done on this trip. Amen. Well, just to share a couple thoughts with you, uh, one of the things that uh, Pastor Mullins challenged our teenagers and, and the adults on the trip was to be grateful to God for what he has done. And I truly believe just being able to watch the video again and see the pictures again and think about all the times that God answered prayer and, and ministered in a special way, um, I am grateful to God uh, for what he has done. And there's many uh, other personal instructions that Pastor Mullins shared with our group and with, with us. has been very helpful and uh, so grateful to the Mullins for hosting us and having our group there. But also thankful, again, I'm, I'm unique. I, I'm thankful to have went with my entire family. All four of us got to go. And we're also thankful that we got to visit family. Uh, Levi and Brittany are special to us and the boys and we miss them so uh, but we know that they're in the center of God's will and we are so grateful for what they're doing uh, there uh, in, in, in England and in the UK and so we're so thankful for them uh, I left England myself strengthened in the matter and convicted in the matter of prayer and I came back realizing how little I pray and how much I need to pray, and how much I need to be on my knees. And so I am thankf thankful for what the Lord did for me, uh, particularly on the trip in terms of prayer. Uh, I want to share two verses with you. I got a chance to share my testimony at one of the gospel missions one night. It was a blessing to be able to do that. And one of the verses I shared uh, was in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. It says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. 
Great is thy faithfulness. Praise the Lord for his faithfulness. Time and time again, we saw that on our trip. Um, and then the, the, the last verse I'll share with you uh, this evening is out of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 2. The first part of that verse says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Our, our goal as a group was to go and serve. And we went and served, and our, our, our goal was to be a blessing. And I truly believe, I even got to talk to Pastor Mullins th this afternoon, and some, some uh, young men are coming and, and being faithful to the church and faithful to their Bibles. That was a direct result of the, of the mission there. And so what an encouragement, uh, strengthening that which remains. And not only are we to do that there, but we're to do that here. And what a burden we have, as the pastor mentioned, the bus ministry, and all the things and all the ministries we have to strengthen the things that remain here and, and going forward for the cause of Christ. And one last thing I'd like to share with you. Uh, you saw a couple of vi uh, videos of us singing, but uh, one highlight for myself is um, we got to sing uh, Amazing Love, the hymn Amazing Love that was written by uh, uh, Charles Wesley. Uh, and that was, uh, we got to sing that in Charles and John Wesley's chapel. Uh, in London, a cappella, the whole group standing up there. And that was a highlight to me just to think about God's amazing love and to think that we were standing in the very place where he wrote that hymn and uh, spoke to him personally about that. So uh, what a blessing. Uh, thank you for your support and how you supported and prayed for us along the way. Well, um, good evening. Um, I'm Noah. And uh, I guess I didn't know this, but I'll be picking up, pi piggybacking off my dad a little bit um, on the topic of prayer. Um, but just when I was asked to share my testimony, I thought of uh, what the Lord had done uh, personally in my life and showed me on the trip. And definitely seeing the Lord work through prayer was truly the highlight of the trip for me. You know, even before the trip, the Lord was working out the details and answering prayer for the work in Worcester and the preparation of the states, whether it be from getting passports in to the finances he provided for us to go, and even in Worcester, working out the park for us to be in that was so close to Main Street that we could walk to where we had the opportunity to street preach, to sing in the street, to hand out gospel literature. Um, just the Lord working and going before us and preparing uh, the work we could do in Worcester. Um, but time and again, the Lord answered prayer for us, and sometimes in the very moment that we were praying, the Lord answered our prayer. And there was a few boys that came one night and, uh, of the mission in Worcester, and it was just amazing. Uh, we had the opportunity to just gather in a circle and pray for them, and it was just amazing to see the Lord do a work in their hearts as we were praying and uh, I just want to leave you with two verses to think about. Uh, John, 13, John 14, 13 and 14 says, And whosoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's just amazing to think about um, God's promise of prayer and that he promises to answer our prayer. Um, and just the power of prayer was amazing uh, how God blessed our trip. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Jordan. Um, and one thing that I learned um, the week that we were in England was that God works in hearts even when we don't know it. Because there's plenty of times when we went um, leafleting, uh, outreach, uh, visitation, I guess you could say, um, to invite people to the Worcester Gospel Meeting. Um, and there's a lot of times, most of the time, uh, people kind of rejected what we had to say. You know, they had to say, you know that's not for me, uh, nah, I'm, I'm okay, things like that. And a lot of us could get, I guess you could say, discouraged on like, why? But we shouldn't be because it's not our job to save them. It's our job to plant the seed of salvation, um, and it's God's job to save them. So just because they reject what we have to say now doesn't always mean that um, they'll reject what uh, we have to say, like, forever. Um, and God can still work in their hearts, and he will. Um, so that's just, that was an encouragement to me to know that God's not done uh, working in people's hearts. Um, so thank you. Amen. 
Hi, my name is Callie, and I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to go on this mission trip to England. Thank you, for all you to all you guys for all your support and prayers for this trip um, and for coming to our fundraisers and all that you did behind the scenes. God worked in so many ways, and there's so many things that I could talk about and that you'll hear about, but I wanted to share a quote that Pastor Mullen said to us our first night in England. When we got there, we were exhausted. It was... We traveled through the night, it was a rough plane ride, but we made it there safely and um, Pastor Mullins had something ready to share with us. He was talking about the story of Joshua and how the Israelites had to surrender to God and truly trust him for the walls of Jericho to fall, even though the first six days they didn't see anything happen. And Pastor Levi said this, surrender all and you'll see walls fall. And that stuck with me throughout the week. Monday was our first day handing out leaflets in the city and to be honest, it was very discouraging for some of us. I'd never had so many people reject the gospel straight to me. Um, that night was the first night we did the kids club and the church service, and not a lot of people came. We were grateful for the people that did, and they, the meetings were still a blessing to us, but I was surprised at how little people had come despite the amount of leaflets we had handed out that day. Tuesday was the same way, but Tuesday night at the service, so many people came, we had to bring out more chairs. That was also the night that our new friend Leo accepted Jesus as his savior, and it was such a blessing to see how God worked in the hearts and lives of those people when we were discouraged and didn't feel like anybody was listening or interested in coming. I was reminded Tuesday night of that quote from Pastor Mullins, surrender all and you'll see walls fall, and that even when we don't see or feel God working, Keep serving him. He is working and he will do more than we can imagine. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mason, and uh, watching that video, I realized I need a haircut. But, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll get that probably tonight or sometime. I have no idea. But a verse I was meditating on before we went to England was Luke 6.45, and it says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And so that was something I want to think about going into England, and even after, that I felt like I needed my heart right with God, otherwise I wouldn't be an effective servant. But my main takeaway from, from uh, going to England was that how blessed we are in America to have churches. Because talking to the people in England, I realized that, I mean, even if they tried going to churches, which I was told that by a few people, they were just, they fell off or they didn't preach the gospel or something like that. And it's, there's a lack of good churches there's also a lack of almost any churches, which is surprising considering the history that England has with churches. But that was my main takeaway, being that I'm blessed to be in America, that we have the ability that we could go to church and uh, just have that not really taken away from us. But I pray that, uh, that there will be churches planted in England and Brother Levi is doing that, and it, is, it was awesome to see the different people in the different churches that they had there. Thank you. Uh, I'm Teen. If you haven't already noticed, the main theme um, of the trip was prayer. Um, and there was a uh, uh, prayer request that um, I asked the Lord even before the trip even started, and that was that um, God would give me the opportunity uh, to lead somebody to the Lord on the trip while I was there. And uh, we had worked throughout the week giving out um, leaflets and inviting people. Um, but it was on the last day, and it was the last meeting. And um, there was a young lady there, and her name was Nicola. And um, the Lord gave me and uh, Mason the opportunity to, uh, to lead her to the Lord. Um, and she was an agnostic, and uh, she had been searching. But um, she didn't really know. But um, the Lord was working in her heart. And uh, the Lord is working in our hearts as well and giving us the words to say. Um, and prayer works, absolutely. Um, because even I don't believe that um, I would have had the opportunity if I wouldn't have, have asked the Lord for it. Um, 
Uh, so he definitely answered that prayer. Um, and prayer works. It's powerful. Um, and I, the Lord definitely convicted me that I need to be praying more. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lily, and the mission, on the mission trip to England, I realized how grateful I am for so many things that I didn't even think about, like ice and salt and not having to pay to go to the bathroom and a home church and a community where most people already know who Jesus is or has heard about him before. Um, most of the days when we were in England, we leafleted in the city, and I'm a very talkative person, and I'm not very shy, so I didn't think that it would stretch me very much, but um, when, pe when person after person just flat out rejected Jesus every time I would say the word Christian, um, it really got to me, and most, here, most people here would take the leaflet and smile, even if they didn't want it, and... Um, no one smiled there, and no one wanted to take the leaflet or hear anything about Jesus. Another thing I realized was how little churches there were and how confused everyone who would talk to me appeared. I talked to one woman who said she was a Christian Catholic, which really confused me. So my testimony isn't so much a testimony, but more of a realization that I had. Um, a realization of how many people are out there that are lost and confused and don't really have a place to find answers. Like Mason said, they don't really have many churches there and they're all just so confused and how needed missionaries are and how much the world really needs Jesus. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Bailey. During the gospel mission, there were groups that gathered and prayed during the service. On Tuesday, the second day of the gospel meeting, I was in the prayer meeting during the service, and I felt like God had his hand on my shoulder. It felt like he just spoke the words to me that I needed to hear. I started thinking about the people that need to hear the gospel, and, they, and them not thinking about what would happen to them after death. I've listened to missionaries that come to our church and explain their ministry, but I've never comprehended the spiritual need of other people. During this trip, I surrendered my life to God's will, and I want to serve the Lord in whatever I do in my life. I want, to, I want my heart to be open to God and pray. I'm gonna read 2 Peter 3.18. But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. I want to grow in grace and give him all praise because he's faithful, good, powerful, strong, graceful, and an all-knowing God. Thank you. Hello, my name is Allie, and I just want to say to the whole church and to everybody who supported us through this how thankful I was for the opportunity to go over to England and see all the things that we did. It was just such an amazing experience that I've never had before to be able to serve the people over there. I didn't really realize how much of a blessing it would be to me to be able to serve people, not just that they would appreciate it, that, but that it really blessed my heart. And I'm just so thankful that we got to see God work in all the different ways that he did. We, all of us, got to serve in some way in the children's service or the service each night, Monday through Wednesday. And it definitely stretched me more than I thought it would. I'm not a very talkative person. This kind of terrifies me right now. But it really was just something that I've never done before. But I didn't realize how much I would enjoy and how much that God could use me if I would just give it up to him. We thankfully saw people come to all of the services each night, which was really what I had been praying for, that people would come, because it was so discouraging hearing people not want to listen during the day, but to see at least one or two children come to the service each night was such a blessing. And we all got to see how God works through prayer and through all the services and just through what he had for us. 
we thankfully saw people come to each service each night and we got to see on Tuesday and Wednesday night two people come to know God as their Savior, which was really what it's all for. And this trip in general really just opened my eyes to the amount of people who don't know what we do and don't know God like we do. They've never heard his name or heard the stories. And it really just helped me redirect my focus personally in my life on what truly matters, which is that people need the gospel and we need to be doing what's going to last for eternity, which is people coming to know him. Hello, my name is Evan. I would just like to say one of the takeaways I learned in England was how um, prayer really it, it's something like I the whole airplane security check. We had some um, some funny st stories about that, <laughs> but um, just everything we prayed for and whoever else, everybody else I was praying. But one thing that really hit me was this, the first day with the missions and the kids program. There were like only like one or like two or three people there, but then the second day. I was in a prayer meeting and I realized that um, once we were done praying and when I walked out, I just saw how, like, I guess I saw what it would be like to be a missionary and the job they did. We prayed and invited people out and I was able to see when I walked out there how many people actually showed up and I was really grateful of what God did. Another thing that, um, I realized was in, when I was up there and I was giving out leaflets and some of the people would be like, well, I used to go to a church, but I don't anymore. And often, I have to be honest, if I was them, I would have, if I was in that position here, I would have been like, okay, I'm sorry. But I realized I took a bigger step and asked them why and just, um, I had God with me the whole entire time when I was speaking to the people I speak to. So I just like to appreciate God and all the work and how prayer really matters. Thank you. Hey, I'm Karsten. <clears throat> and two things really stood out to me when I went to England. Um, the first one, like many people already said, is that prayer works. Um, you'll probably hear that a lot more tonight. But when we went to England, something that Pastor Kyle and Mr. Levi really stressed to us was just to pray. Because so many times we, when something goes wrong, we just think to do everything but pray. But that's the one thing we should be doing. Um, as you've heard, we did a lot of outreach, and something that Mr. Kyle told us all to do was if we get a lot of no's, just stop, pray, and then keep on leafleting. And a couple times, we would just keep hearing, no, no thanks, I'm good. And then me and whoever I was with would just stop, and we would just pray. And almost every time, the very next person we would hand a leaflet to would be like, oh yeah, what's this about? And it was just good to see prayer truly work in my life and over in England. So. Amen. Amen. Hello, and for most of you, who, some of you who don't know me, my name is Olivia. And before I begin, I would like to thank, thank all of you and express gratitude for all the prayers and funds that you provided for us to make our missions trip possible. Without the funds you sacrificed, we would not all have been able to go to the missions trip in England. And most importantly, without your constant prayers, we would not have been able to see the outcome of the missions trip that we did. Prayer is a tool so easily forgotten about in our day and age. However, it is the most important tool that we Christians hold. Although I have seen countless prayers answered throughout my life, this missions trip really drove home to me how important prayer is. One prayer I was able to see answered while through while on the mission trip was seeing someone come to know the Lord. Braden and I were able to both talk to a young man named Leon about salvation. Originally from Cyprus, Leon had an orthodox background and was very confused on certain aspects of Christianity like many people we see around us in Tennessee. By taking the Bible and showing him that 
that it is by nothing that we can do but God's sacrifice alone that we can be saved, he finally understood his need for a savior. It was incredible to see his eyes light up once he prayed and received Christ as a savior. There is nothing like witnessing someone receive the joy that Jesus bestows on those who do trust in him. While this was indeed a splendid answer to prayer, it was also conviction to me that I do not pray or witness as often as I should where I am. Yes, people in England are lost, and many have not heard the name of Jesus for themselves, but we must also remember those we come into contact with every day here in our own Jerusalem are also on their way to hell. We might live in the Bible Belt, but like Leon, many are confused in a form of Christian religion that they think grants them a home in heaven. As we continue, we need to pray for laborers to go to different places and also seek the will of God that we perhaps should go to the mission field ourselves. However, our job does not stop there. We need to share the gospel with those around us and also pray in every circumstance we find ourselves in. In closing, we need to have faith that God will answer our prayers and will be with us in every avenue he desires for us to walk down. Matthew 11, 22 through 24 states, And Jesus answering, saying unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall, see, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou moved, and, thou, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever, whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye will receive them, and ye shall have them. Thank you. Hello church, my name is Jude. Um, I just want to say thank you to your prayers and your support for uh, our youth group and uh, you, uh, thank you for all your prayers and support. Uh, a few things that God really spoke to my heart about was, like most people said, is uh, prayer works. Here, prayer just kind of felt like a thing everyone does, but whenever you go over to England, you really see people's hearts and how everyone's all in and 100% for God. And here, a lot of people are lukewarm and they're kind of on the edge. But one thing is that whenever, that we need to be more for Christ. We don't need to be on the edge. We need to be all for Christ. Um, and a good example of that is uh, some of the members of that church. Uh, they weren't scared or afraid to talk to people about God. They were all in and they, they wanted to know your testimony and they were really excited whenever they got to share theirs. And another thing is that whenever we do witness, our job isn't to save people, our job is to plant the seed and not to be discouraged whenever people reject whenever we witness to them, but that we have done our job and planted the seed. Thank you for your support. Hi, I'm Allie, the other one. It got kind of confusing on the trip, but um, I want to praise the Lord for how he showed himself to us on this trip. It was like he was in the room with us when we were praying and we'd go out, we went out of the room we were praying in and we immediately saw results. Like it was crazy and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I've never felt so close to him before. And it was amazing to be able to do something out of the ordinary for him and to be able to plant water and reap seeds for his glory in England. This trip made God more real to me. We experienced rejection of the gospel on the streets of Worcester and the true joy of a lost soul being forgiven and renewed by God. Before we left, Leo, the man who got saved, said to us, keep doing what you're doing because your God is amazing and your gospel really works. That stuck with me and encouraged me to start actually believing in what I'm praying for. To open my hands toward God in expectation for him to do very great things. I love serving the Lord because you know you're doing something that will last for eternity. You get to see the results of your labor and feel the excitement of serving someone you love. And when you look back, you can see all the ways that God has prepared and provided for you even before you ever needed it. I'm thankful that God answers prayer, that he is real and working in lives today, and that I'm back in a country that has ice and Chick-fil-A. Uh, this is in Psalm 30. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. So teach us to number our days, for soon it shall be cut off, and we will fly away. Thank you. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Bella. And when Brother Kyle asked all the teens to share their view on how God worked during this trip, we were all so excited because God went above all expectations and helped us gain a completely new perspective on multiple things. But before I talk about what God did in England, I'm going to talk about how God brought me here and how I was able to go on this trip. I'm blessed to be able to say that I've gone through every stage of my life knowing Christ. I've grown up at this church and I got saved at VBS when I was six years old. I'm not gonna go into detail for time's sake. I started growing up, I joined the choir and the nursery ministry. I started high school, got more friends and became comfortable. Key word there. I got through my first semester, I started my second semester and toward the end of January, I became sick. At first I thought it was just a bug and it would eventually go away, but it didn't. It was persistent and it felt like a 24 hour shift seven days a week. And the reason why this is important to the story is because by the looks of it at the time, I wasn't going to be able to go on this mission trip. And as time passed, the enemy really got to me. I was praying that the Lord would heal me all the time and others started praying as well, but I just wasn't getting answers. And I started getting angry with God. I started asking, God, why are you doing this to me? But then I settled down and was like, okay, I'm just going to trust that you're not trying to ruin my life and you're just putting the puzzle pieces together. So I kept praying, but it wasn't getting better. I had countless tests and I started telling myself that based on the way the situation looked to others, it was a little suspicious. Being sick also affected me mentally and I was fully preparing to deal with it for the rest of my life. I continued praying and I was sent to a hospital in Knoxville for a big test and God revealed to the doctors what was wrong with me. I was put on two simple medications and standing in front of you guys right now, I'm significantly better. And it was one of those situations where at the end of it, you can just tell that only God could have done that. So I just wanna take a moment and thank everybody who kept me in their prayers during that difficult time in my life because not only did it make my relationship with Jesus stronger, but it allowed me to be able to go on this wonderful missions trip. So the missions trip, I knew I shouldn't have gone last because he said make it two minutes and I was like, okay, I'll try. Anyways, if I could describe the missions trip in one word, it would be motivating because it wasn't until I went to England until I realized, man, we're blessed here in East Tennessee. We have ice cubes and they don't. I'm just kidding, we survived the 10 days without them. But we would go to the streets of Worcester and hand out gospel leaflets and people would laugh in your face and tell you no, which was obviously different and more sad for them than it is for us. But we did have good conversations with people and it was cool to see all the random, go the random um, sprinkles of encouragement that God sent us. We became friends with some of the teens at the Mullins Church, Beaches Road. And I thought I would show you guys this cute little necklace that a girl named Faith made me, which I thought was super sweet. Everybody at Beaches Road was so excited for us to be there, which was so encouraging as we were going into the city giving out gospel leaflets. I've had a few people ask me what my favorite part of the trip was, and honestly, it wasn't the sightseeing, it wasn't the shopping, it was the praying. On Tuesday of the trip, a group of guys from our youth group invited two guys to the gospel mission, and that they were playing football, which is soccer here, at the park, here at, to um, hear the gospel. They ended up coming to the service and staying the whole time afterward. A few of our teens talked to them and another group of us, including me, realized that they were having a deep conversation about salvation. So we stopped everything that we were doing and just started praying. We all huddled in a circle and cried unto the Lord that these guys would get saved. We felt the Holy Spirit as we were praying and it was such an emotional and motivating experience in the best way possible. And by the grace of God, one of those boys went home with Jesus in their heart. The next day he brought more people and another person got saved as well. And as I saw that happen right before my eyes, it was plain and simple that prayer works. A song I love called Talking to Jesus has great words of encouragement about praying. It says, there's no wrong way to do it. There's no bad time to start. It don't have to sound pretty. Just tell him what's on your heart. Later it says, so just talk to your father like you are his kid. So let this be your little word of encouragement to always pray and know that God works in ways that you aren't always going to understand. You just have to trust that even though it may not be comfortable right now, his plan will ultimately work out and bring God glory. So keep following the Lord, walk through every door of opportunity he opens and God will deliver.
Bella, he didn't tell me two minutes. Uh, he probably should have. No, uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Eugene, um, and my wife, Emily, and I have the privilege of serving with these great teens and with Brother Kyle and Miss Anna on a regular basis. Um, and uh, my prayer before we went was that what God would get a hold of their hearts. I'd love to see a great work done. I'd love to see a church started in Worcester. I'd love to see people saved. But we need a generation of young people in this country that will stand up for God. And I'm, I'm glad to see that happening. Um, there were so many good things that God was gracious about while we were there. And, and um, one of the, I, I want to hit just a couple really quick. Uh, one was the fact that uh, some of us took a group of team nearly 10 years to the day um, there. And at that time, Brother Levi was just starting out, Pastor Mullins was just starting the ministry there. And there were three chapels, three works being done. On Monday, there was a meeting of all of the missionaries and they all came to, to Worcester where we were having the, the event. And it was really encouraging for my wife and I because uh, of the 11 works that are being done there now. We had personal relationships with, I, I don't know, five, six, seven of them. Um, and it was just really encouraging to see what God's done because our teenagers came back 10 years ago and said some of the similar things that you've heard here tonight about how it's a difficult country. But God is still working in that country. Amen. On Sunday, we had a uh, service. And one of the things I absolutely love about England is they are an all-day service. Um, uh, they go to church in the morning and they go home at night. Uh, they ate together. They, this a wonderful time, the afternoon service. Uh, or the evening service is their evangelistic service. So visitors actually come on Sunday night instead of Sunday morning. But your home folk are the folk that come in on Sunday morning and they stay pretty much all day. They fellowship. Some of them come 45 minutes to an hour to get to a good Bible-believing church. And it's just such a blessing to spend time with them. But they kicked us out of the first one, my wife and I, uh, and sent us over to another church. Uh, so not kicked us out, but they gave us the opportunity to take a few of the teens over to the other side of Birmingham, uh, where a church plant and a chapel has been open and a church plant is going on there in the heart of an uh, immigrant community that's predominantly Muslim. And as we walked in there, I met a, met a man named Gilbert and Gilbert uh, was about to teach Sunday school. Sunday school happens about three o'clock in the afternoon there. And he was about to teach Sunday school and he had uh, all the kids gathered around and him and I were talking. He, was, he told me, he says, it's so good to have your team here. He said, but it saddens me deeply. He said, we were once a great nation of Christians. And now we have people bringing the gospel to us. <laughs> then he got up and he read this. Now it came to pass in the third year, Hosea of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abby and the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that David, his father, and if you don't know your history of kings there, his father Ahaz was a very wicked man and he took the nation away from God. But then Hezekiah raised up at 25 years old, a young man, and he stood up for God. And he removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. Uh, for unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called um, it, and he uses a name there I can't pronounce. Uh, he trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him uh, was none like him among all the kings of Judah nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses and listened. And the Lord was with him 
And he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And God hit me right there square between the eyes. One generation lost it and one generation got it back. Then they asked me in that evening service to get up and say something about our church. And it was a great English preacher, George Whitfield, that came to the colonies. They sent a preacher that was under persecution in England. And he came to the colonies and they say he preached to almost every, uh, enough that every colonist could have heard him at one point or another. But one man that heard him was Shubal Stearns. And Shubal Stearns ended up um, uh, going under his ministry and ended up starting Sandy Creek Baptist Church over there in um, Sandy Creek, North Carolina. And after a hundred years of another group praying for God to send a revival to the world, the Great Awakening broke out. And amongst that great awakening was Sandy Creek Revival in North Carolina, where a man by the name of Titus Lane and about a thousand other people were sent out of there to start churches around, our, around what was the colonies and the new country of America. And Titus Lane came over here to Little Ridge over there, Buffalo Ridge, and planted our church 245 years ago. We can't rest on that history because it's one generation can lose it. But you heard a lot about prayer, and I'll piggyback on that. God answers prayer. He's answered a prayer to get a hold of some hearts of teenagers. And I'm excited about that, guys. It is a privilege. Brother Kyle jokingly calls me the aged man of the group. And I will say, at 51, it was a lot harder to do this trip than it was at 41. If you wait till 61, I don't know where I'm going. Uh, but it, it was good to be able to go with him. And there were a lot of things that were hard. The 55 miles we walked was hard. But there's a lot of things that I've heard tonight. And it sounds like there's been some encouragement and some discouragement. What they're not telling you is that while there were many that refused the leaflets, on Tuesday... We started to run out of the 5,000 that were printed and had to get more for Wednesday. Amen. See, we get so, it's so easy. I do it too. I don't know how many times I had to stop and pray, Lord, give me somebody, because it got discouraging. So this week, church, I'm going to leave you with a challenge. Thursday, we will be celebrating the independence of this country. May we as a church... In our heart, sign a declaration of dependence on God and dependence on prayer. One of the teens said, it is a tool in a Christian's toolbox that so often gets left in the toolbox until there's an emergency. Church, if we can get a hold of God, you've seen what some young, young people can do. Probably the most powerful moment of prayer for me while we were there was Wednesday night. We had wrapped up dinner and it was time for prayer before service. We simply opened in prayer and then it was anyone in the room that wanted to pray could pray. And one person prayed and then another person prayed and then another person prayed. And we're praying with them as they're praying. And then Leo prayed. The young man they all reference getting saved Tuesday night. He had no example to follow. He simply opened his heart to God and begged God, thanked God for what he had just done in his own life. And then begged God to get a hold of the hearts of the friends he brought that night. And you've heard that God answered that prayer. There's so many more stories that we can tell you, but I'll, I'll leave it there because I'm sure I'm over my two minutes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Radford. Thank you, teenagers. I'm going to invite the teenagers to come on up and uh, take their place. They're going to sing a song here. And uh, as they do, I got the opportunity to uh, preach at Beaches Road Sunday night. And uh, we looked at Psalm 113. Psalm 113 is 
all about praising the Lord. It says in verse number one, praise ye the Lord, praise O ye servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. That same psalm ends the same way it begins. It says, praise ye the Lord. The psalmist praises God because of who God is. God deserves praise, but the thing that captivates the psalmist, it seems, is that an all-powerful, transcendent God would reach down and touch the lives of us. And I'm thankful for these teenagers going on this trip. And I'm thankful for a God who reaches down and touches their lives. I'm thankful for a God who reaches down and died for us. And as they sing this song, it's a song that reminds us of how God reached down and touched our lives.
Why don't y'all stay one more time? I want you to think about this. Now, these are your young people. I mean, they're yours. You, you, I mean, they're, some of them, they're literally yours, but they're yours. And you have invested. This church has invested time, but they've also invested money to put them over there. And you have, the Lord has changed their life. And so I want you to know everybody who gave that yard sale, many of you just gave through the offering. Others, you went to Doris's supper over here and just gave in a myriad of ways, but you got the money to them to get them over there. And I want you to know that what's happened in their life is not going to be forgotten. And they're a bunch of nice looking young people. They're dressed right. And they came up here and handled themselves well. Folks, this is a treasure for our church. We're not doing them a favor. They are doing us a favor. We're back and forth. And I want you to pray for them. I want you to watch them. Not to watch them to catch them do things. That happens sometimes too. But to watch them so you can encourage them, so you can pray for them. Lord knows that you messed up a lot. And I messed up plenty. We don't need people catching us. We need people encouraging them along in the way. The Bible says, let no man despise thy youth to them, but be thou an example in faith and purity and all those. And, and they've got some responsibility, but we do too. Paul went on after that. He says, I'm going to be there. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this. We've got a great responsibility. I believe God with all my heart. I believe God is doing something special in our church. I want him to sing it one more time. And I want you to think about the impact that God has made on their lives. And we'll have an invitation afterwards. Maybe God's working on you as well through these young people. This would not be the first time revival was brought by a group of young people. And so if the Lord's doing something in your heart, I don't want you to say, Lord, that's, that's for the kids. That's not for the kids. That's for all of us. And I let, pray the Lord will let it soak down over you. Why don't you sing it one more time?
Amen and amen. Thank you, young people, for what you've given us tonight. And thank you, church. Each of them were able to go by the good donations that you've given and um, the, just, just the wonderful way that you have been so good to them. But as you give to God, God gives much more back to you. And I don't know how a church could expect to have more than what we just had tonight if we were taking money up for something. I want to thank you, thank you. And young people, thank you so much for your goodness and uh, you, you, you being used of the Lord. Now remember, they're all teenagers. And uh, the scripture says, as I mentioned, that uh, they're not supposed to let any man despise their youth. They're supposed to live in a certain way that they live above that. But then it gives a lot of responsibility back to us to be there for them. And there's a reason why you young people in our nation are are going off the rails so much. A lot of times because we haven't wanted to keep them on the rails. I know we blame the ones that go off on their own, but oftentimes we're not there to model what they're supposed to be doing. And so before we start giving criticism to them, may we make sure that we're where we need to be. Thank you so much. I just want to pray for a while. So Devin, if you'll play something for us. And I'd like to ask you just to what has God done in your heart tonight? England needs laborers, and our church needs these young people, but these young people need us. It really is time that we stop being professional Christians and we start just being real, legitimate, heartfelt followers of Jesus Christ. Seems like we've got it all done. I get a tie on every service, and I plan to keep that. I don't know whether you do or not. It's immaterial to me. Seems like we get dressed up. We know what we're supposed to do. We know what A, B comes after A, and C comes after those. And we know how to go all the way down. But my friend, we need to have some legitimate, strong, vibrant walks with the Lord. And what you've heard these young people experience, Recount is that they came face to face with a Lord that worked in their lives when, he, when they prayed. And they need to see their parents, their grandparents, their pastor, the youth pastor. They need to see them, us running out in front of them so we can say, come on, let's keep on doing it. I have decided to follow Jesus. And as again, to say you, I hope you say it afresh and anew tonight, I've decided to follow him as others come behind me that's wonderful would you just pray with me for a little while father divina you keep playing and it's god's working and you'd like to come to the front once you come on up you can pray for these young people that's for sure they need your prayers lord knows satan's attacking each and every one of them 
I'm not going to beg you to come up. I'm not going to get into all that, but you like to come pray. If you don't want to come up here, there's plenty of room on the front pews, but you can make an altar out of your pew as well if you want to. You can pray for the youth of this church that what God has begun in their lives, that he will continue you see the fans, the fires flame, the, the flames fanned. <laughs> Maybe he's got some of us adults need to get on fire. Maybe God's doing a work in your heart. You say, Lord, I don't want to miss out on what you're doing. As these pray, would you join them? She's just going to keep on playing if you're here tonight and the Lord is working on your heart. He's knocking on your heart's door obey the Lord my friend is there something in your life that you need to give to him give it to him is there some area you need to be obedient in for the sake of heaven and for the sake of your children and these young people that are up here get it right tonight are you here tonight you're not saved How could you be in a service like this tonight and walk out these doors rejecting Christ? If you're here tonight, not sure you're saved, would you come? Let me or somebody take a Bible and show you how you can put your faith in Christ. It's not praying a prayer. It's not signing a card. It's you putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on him. Whatever your need is, come on. Maybe there's somebody you need to pray with. Why don't you just pray with them? You say, oh, Pastor, Brother John, I don't want to embarrass myself. It's about time some of us get embarrassed. If the Lord's dealing with you to go nudge somebody and say, let me pray with you. Why don't you do it? Maybe you need to get somebody else and ask them, hey, would you pray with me? I'm just going to ask her to play through one more and you pray. I just ask her to play just a little bit more. I don't want you to stop if God's working on your heart right there where you are. Would you just do business with the Lord? Well, it's been a sweet place to be tonight. Without a guest speaker, this is the longest Sunday night service I've ever orchestrated. We've had some more when other people were preaching, but not me. But I believe God met with us. You can look this way. Young people, you blessed our hearts tonight. And uh, the Lord has brought us a special spirit in this place. Not the the right spirit. He's given us a great meeting. I believe he's uh, come amongst us. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for these young people. Thank you for singing. And I want to thank you, though, as a church. I don't even know who all gave. And some of you didn't want anybody to know. You just gave, and there were some given to some of the chaperones as well, not just the teenagers, because you can't just send 20 kids over there and say, have a, make sure you make it back alive. <laughs> we needed a few adults. And so some of you gave for that. I want to thank you. I want to thank God for what he's doing. I want to publicly praise the Lord Amen. for what he's let us experience tonight. Amen.
You hate to close things down, but we got to. And um, I had a bunch of stuff that I wanted to. I had a good deacons meeting right before the church service, and I was going to bring a whole litany of things that I wanted to vote on. That is all mission stuff and some good things we want to spend some money on. And um, somebody said that uh, they'll never say if I die that, well, he, he, they'll never say he didn't spend a lot of money. So we, you give it, we'll spend it. Believe me, I, my pastor taught me, if you bring it in, I spend it. So we're going to give it. But uh, we've got a whole list of some missionary items that we, I'd love to send some of our mission money to because it's all going to places that's getting souls saved. So you come Wednesday night, we'll do that at the end of the service. But I just want to say thank you for being in church tonight. It's a joy to be here. Tuesday, Oasis, if you've got questions, you can ask Nathan. It's out the Eastman Shelter, out toward Bays Mountain, and uh, they'll have a wonderful time, 11 to 4. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night, we will vote on a bunch of mission stuff and get some money out to some different people that need it right now in the gospel work around the world. And uh, then as you celebrate the 4th of July, I'm grateful to live in this nation. Amen. As uh, Eugene said, though, we've got a, we're an independent. We're thankful for that in our nation, but we need to be dependent upon the Lord. Thank you for being in church. God bless you. You're dismissed.